I'm mixed with the fire, fire. I am your supplier, tiger, tigers. I drink coolers for hours. Yeah, they go 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. every time. And then she is start of a new day. They go 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. tourist time. When you fix it, take care of all the sisters in your mouth. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Gemini. When you're short, it's a drive a little too work or to school. 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Cancer time. Pay attention to your feelings, cause it's regular. a gift to being the present, the fresh, say, signing back in, you're putting out my perspective into the cloud of the collective to expand the collective consciousness. You're not tuning into the mind of an algae and moon slash Aries moon, and it is a moon day, and it is a Gemini hour, in a Gemini hour, and this video is going to be focused mainly on Gemini with Jupiter being in Gemini. Okay, so this is gonna be focused on Jupiter and Gemini being in two degrees. And uh, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sorta go over Jupiter for Gemini and all the houses, keeping in mind that Mercury is also in Gemini as well, okay? It's, uh, it's conjuncting Jupiter and we got Venus conjuncting the sun in Gemini as well, okay? And all these, I don't know, the moon is in Taurus as I make this video, okay? But this is gonna be mainly on, you know, this Gemini energy, this Gemini stellium that we're focused, that we, uh, we're, we're in right now, okay? So uh, this Gemini energy, we got Jupiter and Gemini, and looking at one of my previous video on Jupiter and Gemini, one of my videos I did years ago, you know, just breaking down the energy, uh, I sort of, you know, didn't, obviously didn't have the knowledge that I have as far as updating my knowledge and wisdom that I, you know, had back then as far as to now. You can't always, you can't necessarily compare your past to your future, you know, but, you know, if I, I basically, what I'm learning about this Gemini energy is, you know, the expansion of communication and how, how, you know, as soon as Jupiter got into Gemini, you know, my words and the formulation of words <clears throat> and thought processes 
you know, especially conjuncting Mercury in Gemini, Mercury's home in Gemini, you know, it sort of like gives this, uh, makes it a lot more easier for me to process thoughts, you know, because my Mercury is uh, permanently in, in, in retrograde in Capricorn. So, you know, uh, whenever y'all talking about Mercury in retrograde, yeah, that's, that's, that's my Mercury permanently type shit. So it's just like, uh, with this energy, with this, uh, transit, you know, with Mercury being in Gemini, you know, it sort of helps, helps me as far as I write, you know, so my writing, you know, all these kind of things, you know, when it comes to writing and, you know, processing words and thoughts and being able to receive messages, you know, from my spirit as well with Jupiter being in Gemini. So Jupiter dealing with spirituality and uh, the teacher, the guru of the planets, you know, being in Gemini, this allows <clears throat> you to receive knowledge and wisdom, you know, or yeah, knowledge and wisdom as far as information, you know, from your spirit or your higher self, whatever you call it, God, you know, this, this makes the, 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 what's it called? Information and the process of the information a lot more easier. That's Jupiter conjunct Gemini, not Jupiter conjunct Mercury, okay, in Gemini. But as far as the sun conjunct Venus, okay, sun conjunct Venus, this is uh, in Gemini. This is the, <clears throat> our, our actions, aka our solar plexus, and our uh, sacral chakra, Venus, okay, and aka what we love, appreciate, and value, and what we're willing to compromise with, our love language, okay? This is, this is a sort of like, we want to talk and communicate about these things. So we're mixing whatever we're into as far as our actions, you know, you you are to mix your actions and whatever you, brings you pleasure and sort of like, you know, you're gonna have a lot of people communicate about these things because solar plexus, solar plexus, and as far as the sun, you know, the sun is the solar plexus, so this is what you express. And the sun is in Gemini at this time, so people are just wanting to talk, you know, and communicate and relate on a one-on-one -on -one level, you know, depending on where it's at in your chart, group individuals, and you gain, you connect with uh, people that vibe, or let's say in your close surroundings, because this is Gemini again, so this is dealing with your surroundings, and aka your neighbors, or your cousins, or people that you're close to. So this is what you would like, sort of like, want to communicate about and communicate with these kind of people and you will value these people and value really talking to these people at this time and a conjunction can play as all this all the alignments you know so it can play as <clears throat> a good thing or a bad a negative alignment or 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 positive alignment okay so uh i think we got this, so all these planets, again, are sextiling Mars, as far as, they're gonna sextile Mars, you know, cause Mars is in Aries. 
So Mars being in Aries, 25 degrees and 50 minutes. Uh, and we got Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Gemini. And Jupiter. So again, it's a really passionate time you know and if if you can mix your oh, what the, you can mix your passions with your pleasures and and if you are if you are a musician at this time or you or you do something that requires a microphone you know it's a uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a good time to really, you know, dive deep into your passions, you know, and especially with the writing and the inf information how it flows <clears throat> at this time, with Mars conjuncting the Sun, Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury. You know, this is shit. This is even how I made my intro song type shit. You know, it's like I could feel the energy just, you know, just just coming to me, you know, like effortlessly, you know, when I'm writing and and I'm Mars. I got Aries moon. So it's just like I'm connected to that Martian, that Martian, I have that Martian energy. You know, so I'm a Martian sign. So with that, you know, I'm connected to that waters of, you know, the passion, motivation, intention, desires, willpower. And what else am I leaving? Around there, yeah, the Mars, the Marsh, the Martian thingy, the Martian energy. So... Yeah, well, Mars sextile Jupiter, this is a, uh, this is uh, the passions to. It's a, like it's like opportunities to, to dive deep into your passions and, you know, communicate about your passions, or, let's say, grow with your passions. Grow grow and expand with your passions, the opportunities to grow and expand with your passions and whatever you do, and especially when you communicate about them as well. So if you communicate about your passions, because Mercury is also conjuncting Jupiter, you got the opportunities to react and respond in a communicative way, or opportunities to communicate about your passions. So. Uh, Mars sextile Venus. This is a uh, the the love for uh, opportunities to opportunities to mix your uh, love language with your passion. So the opportunities to to volley really communicate. And the value and value your passions. When you dive deep into your passions, you will have the opportunities to communicate about them. And and sun uh, sextile uh, Mars, sun sextile Mars, opportunities to take actions towards your passions in a communicative way. Okay, so, however, um, all these planets are squaring Saturn, okay? All these planets are squaring Saturn. So, uh, it's playing out as a 90 degree angle for a learning process, okay? So with Saturn, Saturn, Saturn square Mercury, 
So this is the learning process, learning how to, learning, we're gonna learn how to communicate about our dreams and learning how to communicate or having the right thoughts and ideas to cater to our dreams and, our, and creating stable stability, a stable foundation to stand on in your reality. Uh, yeah, so having the right thoughts and ideas to do that. Uh, if you're on the right energy, the right side of energy, if you're if you're lower octave, then it's like you would just be, you won't even you won't even know have the right thoughts and ideas, or you'd be communicated by the wrong things. So, um, Jupiter square Saturn. So Jupiter square and Saturn now. It was sextiling this whole time while it was in, in Taurus. Okay. So it was giving abundance as far as material, maternal, security, pentacles. But now Jupiter is more giving abundance in the thoughts and ideas realm. Okay, so with Jupiter squaring Saturn now, this is going to be learning how to communicate and articulate. You know the learning how how Ju the thoughts and ideas you receive from Jupiter and your spirit. You know how to sort of make that relate to your your dreams and your subconscious and <clears throat> excuse me how can you communicate about these ideas to help your dreams become a reality how can you communicate about these ideas you receive from jupiter and you know this higher higher learning and a higher knowledge how can you how can you communicate and and articulate that to help your dreams and you know your subconscious and see how you know because saturn sort of helps the with saturn falls in pisces but with it being in pisces it's it's bringing reality to the dreams whatever is in your dream is becoming more of a reality Okay, so uh, <clears throat> yeah, so Saturn is squaring the sun, so sun squares Saturn, okay, and squaring uh, and squaring Venus. So sun square Saturn, this is learning how to react, how to take action towards uh, gaining a fit stable fo foundation to stand on and, and gaining how to react, how to act, take action towards discipline, towards your dreams. So if you have something, if you have a dream, you have to sort of more, okay, so with the sun being in Aries, if the sun was in Aries, and Saturn was in Saturn. Saturn was in Pisces. You had to act towards your dreams. If the sun was in Taurus, and Saturn was was in when the sun was in Taurus, and Saturn was Pisces, you had to value your dreams. Now with the sun being in Gemini, and and uh, Saturn being in Pisces, you have to communicate about your dreams, and that's the learning process. Okay, so. You'll be learning, like, yeah. But with the age of Aquarius again, this is the age of, you know, the, the you know, the age of information. So knowing that there is the sacred Hekka, AKA your words, your, 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 that's your, that's what helps you, you know, that's your, your power. Again, there's power in the tongue. Again, there's life and death in the tongue type shit. 
you know? So with that, you know, the more you communicate, speak life about your dreams and not death about your dreams, you know, Saturn is going to, you know, give you that karma of whatever you, the, the will that you do as far as, or the words you've spoken upon yourself, you know? So that's how that play out. Um, Venus is also squaring Saturn. Okay, so this is learning, okay, 90 degree angle. So learning or minor frustration about how we value and appreciate, you know, our dreams. So at this time you will be tested on how you really value your dreams type shit, you know? So it's like, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, uh, you value, if you value your dreams, you know, you really communicate about them and really, you know, try to, you know, set the stage from, you know, one, let's say set the, set yourself up. So in the future for to see yourself be in that dream, see that dream play out and make that dream a reality, you know? So yeah. That's how that play out. So. Yeah. If you got Gemini in the first house, you, you're you gonna, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have all the Stargates all taken, you'll be taking action towards your appearance and you'll be valuing your appearance and you will be having thoughts and ideas as far as your first house how you how you carry yourself and you would this is where you will be getting uh, knowledge or insights as far as thoughts and ideas from Jupiter conjuncting Mercury so if you got Gemini in the second house, okay, you will be taking action and as far as communicating about your what you value, what you, what you have to offer to the world, your money, you will your uh hold on. what you have to offer to the world, your gifts and your fixed possessions, okay? So if you got Gemini in the third house, you will be taking action as far as communicating about your familiar places, faces and communication in your surroundings, okay? So your cousins, your, your neighbors, this is what you will be communicating about and getting thoughts and ideas from and knowledge and wisdom. If you have Gemini in the fourth house, you will be communicating and valuing your domestic situations, how you deal with privacy, comfortability within the home. And you will also be uh, gaining thought, uh, thoughts and ideas as far as knowledge and wisdom and how to, how to, uh, how to grow with Jupiter conjuncting Mercury there, how to grow with your communication. So if you have Gemini in the fifth house, you will be communicating about your creativity, your entertainment, your children, if you have some self-expression, spiritual house, okay? So this is a sexual house as well to a certain degree. Okay, you will be getting thoughts and ideas and growing with your ideas as far as that house if you have gemini in the seventh house you will be communicating and valuing your relationship how you relate to everything people places and things okay and you will be getting knowledge and wisdom and ideas as far as that house did i skip the fifth, sixth house yeah i did so if you have 
Gemini in the sixth house, you will be communicating and valuing your day-to-day -day routine, health, ability to schedule, and your work, okay, and ability to analyze. And you will be getting knowledge and wisdom and ideas, thoughts and ideas to go off of, to grow, to grow off of that. So eighth house, if you have Gemini in the eighth house, you will be, uh, you will be communicating and valuing your deep, deep desires, uh, transformation, secret, sex, shared, shared values behind the scenes. Okay, your mysticism, occult to a certain degree, and manipulation. I have to add that one. Okay. So, and you will be gaining thoughts and ideas to grow off of that. If you have Gemini in the ninth house, you will be communicating and valuing your higher learning, wisdom, long distance traveling, okay, and your morality, and your broad philosophical ways for looking at the world, religion, and God, okay? So, and you'll be growing and gaining ideas and growing off of that. If you have Gemini in the 10th house, okay, you will be uh, communicating and valuing how you gain status, career, structure, safety, okay? And you will be gaining ideas and, and thoughts and how to grow off of that, okay? If you have Gemini in the 11th house, you will be communicating, you'll be communicating and valuing about unfamiliar places, faces, and how you conduct yourself within the public arena, gadgets, science, technology, astrology, and you will be growing off of that. If you have Gemini in the 12th house, you will be communicating and valuing the subconscious, imagination, dream realm, creativity, romantics, and you'll be gaining ideas and growing off of that. And that's going to be it. The Fresh Sage signing out. Catch you next now. Catch you next now.